good evening guys welcome to our online transformers church uh, my name is Jedi Daragan. I serve here in the Transformers Ministry. And I'm so glad that you could get to join us this evening. And I hope that you guys enjoyed your Easter. Even some that had anticipated that they were going to spend it with some of their extended family members. I just hope you spent the time just enjoying it with your immediate family members. So welcome to our service. And so today, the service is going to be amazing. We are going to continue with the, with the discussion that uh, people, we, we are taking it from last time about purity. Uh, and before we start, we are going to just dedicate the service to God. We are going to pray for some of the things that are affecting us as teenagers. So wherever we, you are, I pray that you may just join me as we fellowship together in prayer. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this evening. We want to thank you, O God, because of your faithfulness, because of your love. We thank you, O God, because you've kept us alive, O God. You have given us help, you have given us sound mind, O God, and you have given us your peace and your love, O God. The world right now is full of chaos, King of Glory. But we thank you, O King of Glory, because even though the, the world is not going the way we want it to go, O God, you have held us with your hands, O God. You have held us with your power, and for that we thank you. We thank you even for the exams that are going on, O God. We pray, O God, that you may give us a sound mind, that you may give us clarity, O God, that even as we are going to do the exams, O King of Glory, that you're going to help us, O God, and just understanding the questions, O oh God, and answering them, O oh King of Glory, in a way that is appropriate, O oh King of Glory. I thank you, O oh King of Glory, because we don't have the spirit of fear or anxiety, O oh God, because you are our strength and you are our strong pillar. We even thank you, O oh King of Glory, for our country, King of Glory. We pray that you may remember us, O oh God. We pray that you may turn your face towards us, O God, and we pray that your mercy may be upon our country, O God. May you help us, O God, because at this moment, O King of Glory, we are helpless, we are hopeless, O God, but you are our eternal hope, O God. You are our strength, O King of Glory, and we choose to turn back to you, O God. Some of our parents are not even able to meet our needs, O King of Glory, but you are a provider, O King of Glory. You're not limited by space, O God. You're not even limited by resources, O King of Glory. I pray that you may meet each one and each and every one of us at our points of need, O God. Father, we thank you, O God. Help us even during this difficult time, O God, to look up to you because you are our salvation, O God. You are our hope, O God. May you help us to fight the battles, O oh God, that even, even people who are close to us cannot be able to help us, O oh God. And Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we dedicate this service to you, O oh God. As we are going to hear from you, O oh King of Glory, may you prepare our hearts, O oh God. May you prepare our minds, O oh God, to hear what you have to say, O oh God. And as your word says, O oh King of glory, that we should not only be hearers of your word, but only also doers, O oh God. May you help us, O oh King of glory, to put into practice whatever you're going to teach us today by your spirit, O oh God. And Father, we thank you, and Father, we glorify your holy name. It's in the name of our Lord we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Uh, so guys, as I was saying last time, uh, last time, Judy and the team were discussing about purity. And uh, different perspectives were said about purity. So today we are going to dive more into scriptures, what the word of God actually says about purity. So our first reading is going to come from Matthew 5, 27 to 30. Uh, and the word of God says, You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gorge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. So b before like we dive into the scriptures, we need to understand what, what purity is. So uh, 
you know, purity, it's very hard for people, for you to hear people say the word purity or the word purity to come from people's mouths nowadays. And so as I was just researching about purity, uh, I found that purity means free from contamination or just living a life free from compromise or corruption. So uh, I remember I used to be a very curious mind at such a young age. So I remember there's a time we had a science lesson. So our teacher came with rice and he came with, uh, he came with soil and he mixed them together. And so he asked us, what do you think is wrong with, uh, with the mixture? So I, I looked at the mixture and I didn't understand anything. So he asked us, do you think the rice is impure or do you think the soil is impure? So I kept wondering why this man would ask us such a question. And then he told us, rice is only supposed to contain rice grains and soil is only supposed to contain soil components. So that means the rice is contaminated with the soil and the soil is contaminated with the rice. So as I, I, as I continue growing up, uh, my perspective about purity kept changing. Uh, I remember even there's one time in Sunday school we used to sing uh, that song of these are my private parts. No one should touch them or play with them. Such songs. You know, we didn't understand the meaning until we grew up now. That is the time that we got to understand about purity. Most of the times when you talk about purity, people only think about sexual purity. But the Lord is calling us to a place of the purity of the mind. Purity in our actions. Purity of the heart. You know, there's one, uh, there's one, there's one saying I, 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 that I love. Purity is what, you, is what you do when no one is watching and it's who you are when you are alone. Basically, purity is character or your conduct. Because out here, you may be fooling people with, uh, with, your, with your actions because you want to, to fit in or you want to feel like you belong. And so our Lord uh, sees purity in a very different light that is different from how we human beings view purity. Uh, and in the book of Matthew, it's telling us if your right eye causes you to stumble, you need to pluck it out. Not necessarily like your eye. If your eye causes you to stumble, you pluck it out. What the Lord is trying to say is... Um, if you, if, you, if you, as a young person, you're not keeping the right company, something, someone or something that will make you uh, move away from your values as a child of God, or some, someone or something which will make you do things that you ought not to do as a child of God. Because most of the time, the, the world right now is so corrupted. Everyone wants to live according to their standards. No one wants to live according to the standards that God has set in his word. And so you, as a young person, you're keeping company which is wrong. You, you hang around your friends. They are doing drugs. You know drugs is not right. But you continue entertaining such. And then you start indulging in such, knowing very well that the word of God clearly states that we should not indulge in such because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And there's a verse in 1 Corinthians, I think 6, that says that our bodies doesn't belong to us. So that means we should not just do whatever we want with our bodies. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, so we should only do things that glorify God. Our actions should only be led by the Holy Spirit. We should not only do things that bring glory to God and his kingdom. It's hard living a life of purity. It's very hard. With our human mind, with our human strength, with our capability, we cannot be able to. Because, uh, let's take for a scenario. Uh, you and your friends are seated somewhere in a corner, and then someone passes, they are maybe dressed inappropriately or they are dressed in a way that you don't deem fit. So you start talking. Uh, or like, uh, this person is not dressed right. You know, the way young people just talk about things that don't even sometimes make sense, for example. 
But we know that is, that is not the life that we are called into. You're not supposed to, to say something bad against your neighbor. Or if you are to correct someone, you're supposed to correct them with love. You tell them, this is not the way to do something. I think there's a way you can do it better. And it, it's funny because even in our dressing nowadays, uh, our dressings are so inappropriate. And we don't care. We, we don't even care about our neighbor. There's, there's, there's a verse that Paul says um, that we should be very careful about the food we eat. Not necessarily food, but that means you should care about your neighbor. If you wear something and then, and then it is inappropriate, and then you know that when someone looks at you in, 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 like a, in a very peculiar manner, it will make them stumble, that it is, it is better for you to dress modestly. If you know you're going to do something that is going to cause your neighbor to stumble, then it's better. You do right according to God's word. So, uh, as you're talking about purity, you know, purity can be compromised probably by words, by your actions. Sometimes you're just seated, you're from your quiet time with God, and then a thought just passes your mind. And you, as a child of God, you know very well that you are supposed to brush it off and focus on other things. No wonder the word of God clearly tells us to meditate upon the word of God day and night so that your mind and your spirit may be occupied with other things. So you don't have, to, you don't have time to actually think, think about things that will contaminate your body, that will corrupt your morals, that will corrupt your mind. There are these movies that we as young people watch all the time. Th these movies, there are these feelings that they awaken. The feelings that they awaken are not even right. And sometimes we want to do the way we see those actors are doing things or actresses are doing things. We forget about what the word of God says, how we are supposed to behave as his children. You know, I I in Psalms 1, it says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of sinners but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Who are your friends? What are their character? What do you people do when you are alone? Do you guys have pure intentions when you are engaging in such? Do you people have like good intentions towards each other? Or are the things that you people being involved in good for the community? And so our Lord... Our Lord reminds us in Galatians, Galatians 5, uh, I think from verse 19. Uh, and so it says, uh, so the desires of the flesh, let me just read it. Galatians 5, uh, 19. It says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And even in Romans 5, in Romans 8, sorry, 5 to 8, uh, it tells us that um, those who live according to the flesh will do things that glorify the flesh. And most of the times, we humans, we are more inclined to sinning than living a pure life, than living a righteous life. So most of the time, we are very comfortable doing things that, that excite our flesh. You, you are indulging in an activity that makes you feel good. But in the eyes of God, whatever you're doing is not right. Whatever you're doing is making you impure. Because in the same book, Romans, it says... Those who will live according to the Spirit will do things that pleases God. Because even in uh, uh, Romans 6.23, it tells us that the wages of sin is death. 
So in the long run, even if we engage in these things, they may give us temporary happiness, excitement, but in the long run, we know where we'll end up. Let's say if you're doing drugs uh, now, you, 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 you are engaging in, uh, let's say, smoking with your friends. For now, it seems a little bit cool because you, you, you are like you're in the company of people. But a time will reach where you cannot, uh, where you cannot even afford to buy uh, cigarettes, for example, or you won't even be able to to actually continue in the activity because your body will be contaminated by that time. You know, the, sometimes we see the word of God as uh, punishment, as restrictions, but they are meant for our benefit. You know, if you follow exactly what God says in his word, okay, you won't live a life which is free from trouble, but it will save you from a lot of things. And, uh, and God in his word is telling us that when it comes to purity, we don't have to do it by our own strength. We don't have to do it alone. Because now, when you, when, when you count on yourself to actually keep yourself pure, then pride comes in. You'll start saying, uh, because uh, and you won't even mention God at me I haven't I haven't engaged in pr premarital sex or I haven't engaged in some other things because naweza, I have self-control but remember in the same book of Galatians 5 it says the fruit of the Holy Spirit are what? self-control so the moment you have the Holy Spirit of God in you, it will actually help you live a pure life. Okay, you won't live to perfection because no one can except Jesus. But we can if we try. And if we rely on the word of God. And th that is why the Bible is very clear. Blessed is the man who meditates on the word of God day and night. I, like wo I love what the book of Joshua 1 says. Let's just turn to Joshua 1. Joshua 1. Uh, uh, Joshua 1 from verse 6. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I saw to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn away from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. The word of God is very clear. If you want to live a life that is pure, if you want your intentions to be pure, then you have to rely on the word of God you have to rely on the Holy Spirit. So about meditation. So uh, you remember all the things that our parents taught us as kids. You still remember them up to now. Because they stuck in our mind. You kept remembering them. Because probably you sang them in a song or through a poem or through a memory verse. And so it is important for us as children of God, to actually rely on the word of God. Not just reading it and you start, in, you start to feel good, you start to feel emotional, no. You read it, you meditate on it, you study it from different versions, and then now you leave it. You start doing it. So even some of your friends, when they see that your lifestyle has changed, they will start to live otherwise. It is not easy. It is not easy to keep ourselves from, from sin, from living a pure life. Even Paul says, whatever I want to do, I do not do. Because sometimes you want to live a pure life. Sometimes you don't want to engage in the things that you engage in, but you find yourself doing those things. That is why God is our strength. That is why God gave us guidance. That is why God gave us direction on how to live a pure life in his word. With ourselves, we cannot be able to do it, 
by the th through the strength that God gives us and through the Holy Spirit, we can be able to do it. It is hard to live godly lives. It is very hard, especially during this time. Because now, because of COVID, there are so many restrictions. We are stuck in one place. Sometimes you're even wondering what to do with yourself. And you know, there's, uh, there's a famous quote that says, an, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So if most of the time you're normally alone and you're wondering what to do, and then now you start having these thoughts, and then you continue thinking about them, thinking about them, and then you end up actually doing them. For our bodies to be contaminated is very simple. It can be a thought. It can be what you see. You know? It can be what you premeditate to work on. The, the way sometimes you just sit down and go like, me, I'll do this thing to Nani because that person did this to me. You know, it amazes me because uh, in our eyes, our own ways are right and no one should tell us what to do. But you know, God tells us that we are not the judge. And, and even the word of God says, the same measure you use to judge another person will be the same measure that will be used to judge you. If Jesus will come now, for example, even today, most of us will be left behind, even me probably, because, uh, okay, you spend most of the time uh, reading the word of God, meditating, having quiet time, and then utoke hapo, mtu akukanyage wanze, oh, mbono mefanya hivi, you have already sinned, you have already contaminated yourself. So living a pure life is not easy. It's not easy at all. But God has given us his word. Let us not forget that. He has given us his spirit. You know, God calls us most of the time to... There's a verse, uh, I think, in the Beatitudes, eh? Matthew 5, that says... Uh, I, I don't know if... Matthew 5, 8 if I'm not very wrong, Matthew 5, 8. Matthew 5, 8, sorry. Uh, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So the Lord is calling us to be pure in heart, pure in our actions, in our mind. It's not easy. Because you, you know you cannot have fellowship with God when your flesh is the one that rules your life. Most of the times, you're, you're very ready to actually do what your flesh wants. You want to engage in sexual immorality. You want to get drunk with your friends because that makes you feel high. You start feeling, you're starting to feel jealous because other people have things that you don't have. That means you're not even contented. You know when you say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want... What do we actually mean when we say that verse? That means the Lord gives us everything that we need to live a pure life. But even if you see that your neighbor has something that you don't have, you won't even be bothered. Because you know God will already supply your need before you even ask for it. So let us rely on the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth, to actually help us live a life full of purity. Life is full of struggles. Today you may conquer something and another day something comes up. So it's not easy. It's not easy. The, 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 the work of purity is not easy. But our Lord showed us that we could be able to walk in the life of purity if we totally surrender to him, if we are fully submitted to him. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, he gave himself up for us. So in the same way, when we, when we go in the presence of God, we are supposed to give ourselves up and tell God, fill us up with your spirit, God. Fill us up. You set your crowns aside crowns of, oh, I look good, oh, I can be able to do this by myself. Because the truth of the matter is, if God would, 
was to abandon us and tell us to live a pure life by ourselves. We could not be able to, the, life, the world would be in chaos because everyone has their own standards of purity. But let us not forget what actually what the word of God says about purity. Uh, so let us read uh, Romans 8, 5 to 8. And it says, uh, sorry, just a moment. Romans 8, 5 to 8. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. So I think the word, the word of God is very clear. If we want to live a life of purity, then we have to have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We have to invite the Holy Spirit into our lives, into our hearts. You know, when, when, uh, when our Lord died and resurrected, he never left us alone. He left us the Holy Spirit to be able to guide us, to be able to teach us, to be able to show us the truth that was not found in the world. It's very hard as a young person to understand some of these things. The Holy Spirit how it works, but your intentionality matters. Do you want to live a pure life? Do you want to be led by God? If you want to be led by God, then you have to invite the Holy Spirit into your life. You have to let him lead you. You have to let him show you the way. You have to let him counsel you in the ways of God. You know, some of, some of, some of the things, uh, there, are, there are sometimes we feel like doing things which are not right. And then, okay, most of the time, what to say, that is not Saudi. That is the Holy Spirit. You know, even before you invite him, he will start guiding you, even before you, you actually invite him. But you, if, you have to, if you want to have an intentional walk with God, if you want to live a life which is pure, then you have to be intentional with the Holy Spirit. You have to invite him to have fellowship with you. Another way that uh, we can be pure is uh, we just read about meditating on the word of God. When was the last time you actually took time off away from your friends and actually studied the word of God? When was the last time? I, I know normally we as young people, we have a lot of time in our hands to actually watch movies or hang out. But when was the last time? When was the last time you actually opened your, your Bible and studied the word of God? Because you cannot live a pure life without actually studying the word of God. You cannot. That is not possible. It's not possible at all. Because before you stopped doing something, like, let's say if you are a young one, it, when you are young, for example, and you stop doing something, it's because your parents pointed you to the right direction. So in the same way, if you, if you want to live a pure life, you have to rely on the word of God. Because the word of God actually tells us what is wrong and what is right. And it actually gives us solutions. You're struggling with addiction, the solution is our Lord. He will work in you to actually deliver you from that addiction that you have. The word of God has power. And another way that we can live a pure life is by us looking to our Savior. Because he lived a pure life, he had good intentions, he had good motives, he was standing for everything which was right on this world. We should look up to him. We should tell him, 
Lord, I am struggling with one, two, three. You know, most of the time you will tell your friends, hey, me, I'm struggling with addiction. Oh, I'm addicted to this. I'll call like, ah, that's normal. But in real sense, that's not normal. Because if it was normal, then Ungeanza could struggle with this thing from such a young age. It's not normal. And I think it's high time we as young people should take a stand. We should not just accommodate everything that comes our way. Because everything that we accommodate actually contaminates the body. It's actually compromising our values. It's compromising our character. It's compromising our conduct as God's children. So even as this sermon comes to a close, I hope that God may place a desire in your heart to know him, to live a pure life, a life that is pleasing to him, a life that glorifies him. It's not easy, remember that. You're not supposed to rely on your own self or on your own strength or abilities, but you're supposed to look unto the Father. And if you're at home, you're wondering, ah, Connie, what has Jed been talking about? Who is Jesus? Who is, what is the word? What is the Holy Spirit? And you have a lot of questions. And you've been struggling with so many things. Addiction, because of the company you've been keeping that you shouldn't have been keeping in the first place. Or the actions that you've been entertaining that you shouldn't have been entertaining in the first place. All is not lost. God is still calling us back to him. Because God wanted us to, to live a pure life from the beginning, just to have a fellowship with him. And you know, God gave us salvation through his son Jesus Christ dying on the cross. So that means even as God looks at us, of course we are full of sin. Because even the word of God says the heart of man is deceitful. So every time you will be more inclined to sinning than actually doing the right thing. So if that, is who, if that is you and you want to receive the Lord as your personal savior, I pray that you may take this prayer with me and just comment below if you've given your life to Christ so that someone can get to walk with you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you as your child. I have been lost because I have entertained things that I shouldn't have in the first place. I have entrusted myself to keep myself pure, and I've ended up moving away from you. I've ended up moving away from communion that comes from fellowshipping with you, O oh God. Father, you say in your word that if I acknowledge my sins, O oh God, You'll be able to sanctify me, O oh God, and you'll be able to accept me back, O oh God. So this evening, O oh God, I come to you. May you have mercy on me, O oh God. May you cleanse me, and may you make me holy and acceptable before thee. I invite you, Holy Spirit, to walk with me from today until the day that our Lord will come. It's in the name of our Lord we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. And we know uh, our service is not complete until we give. And I know because of COVID, sorry, we may not have so much to give. But that little that God has given you, that little, as long as it's coming from your heart with good intentions, don't give because you see your neighbor giving. Give because you're giving from a place of understanding of who God is. Give because God has already provided seed unto you. So I think th there's a pay bill number down on the screen. If you want to give via M-Pesa, I think it's 8675.18. If you want to give your tithe, you write tithe in the account name. If you want to give offering, you write offering. If you want to support any, uh, any project, 
of the church, including to Miliki, you can just write to Miliki. And God will bless you. And if you don't have to give now, the Lord will bless you next time. So let's pray for the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the seed that you've given unto us so that we'll be able to give it back to you. We pray that we give from a place of understanding of who you are, O God, and why it is important to give, O God. May you bless us for all those of us that don't have anything to give today. May you help us to give next time, O God. And Lord, we thank you and we glorify your holy name. It's in the name of our Lord and our Savior. Do we pray trusting and believing? Amen. I know COVID has been tough on our mental health, uh, even on our finances, and so many things. But if you feel like you need someone to walk with you, or you need support in terms of prayer or counseling, there's a number on the screen that you can actually uh, just text and you'll be able to get the help that you need. It's very hard for us to confide in each other because it seems like during this COVID, everyone has their own issues. But there are people who are here who can stand with you, who can actually guide you and just talk to you. So don't let fear hold you back. Remember, a problem shared is a problem solved. And so as today we conclude our service, uh, I hope that you've heard from the Lord. I hope that you'll help us to do what the Lord has instructed us from his word. I pray that you may uh, just invite the Holy Spirit that you will let Jesus just lead you in this journey for all those that have accepted Christ today. And as we conclude our service, may God bless you. May his face shine upon you and your family. Until we meet next time, go, God be with you and your family. Stay blessed.